Hi friends, this is Chris. Welcome back to the channel. So we have some breaking news regarding Binance. Uh, there's been a deal made and I want to go through the details of this and uh, let's just jump right in. So uh, you can see the headlines here. This is coming from Bloomberg. Uh, Binance CEO pleads guilty. Yes, you heard that right. Guilty uh, agrees to pay 50 million fine. However, uh, the company uh, it says here is on the hook, I guess, to pay 4.3 billion and uh, plead guilty to criminal charges. You heard that right, criminal charges. And then um, I guess uh, the sentencing won't be for another six months. So let's take a look at the uh, the details of this stuff. Uh, this is just coming out now. Uh, and um, we've been following this story for quite a long time. Um, there's been ongoing investigation. There's been lots of rumors. There's been a lot of employees jumping ship. And um, evidently, uh, it looks like time to pay the piper. Uh, Binance Holdings Chief Executive uh, Chung Chongpeng Zhao uh, pleaded guilty to, and this is what it is, uh, anti-money laundering violations, anti-money laundering, uh, and agreed to pay 50 million fine Tuesday under a sweeping deal worked out with the Justice Department uh, designed to keep the company operating, and this would be the U.S. Justice Department. Um, Zhao. Uh, agreed to step down as part of the settlement, so he's not going to be CEO anymore. Again, he's stepping down, and uh, which included the Treasury Department and the Commodity Futures Trading uh, Commission. It's actually interesting. We've talked about the CFTC um, quite a bit in the channel, and uh, actually, it was uh, last year I mentioned that um, these uh, uh, or this organization, I, I should say, um, one of the things that was always the question in the U.S. government was who would regulate uh, crypto. Uh, so evidently they are doing their job as, as you can see here and uh this also says here binance agreed to plead uh guilty to criminal charges and pay 4.3 billion fine um the deal ends a years-long investigation into the cryptocurrency uh exchange uh, moreover here we have um binance chose to here's a quote prioritize growth over compliance um, with u.s legal requirements allowing it to conduct billions of dollars in transactions without gathering required information on customers or monitoring uh, transactions. So this kind of stuff is, is interesting because this cuts at the core of why crypto is appealing to many people, right? Uh, again, it says here, um, this is a quote, allowing it to conduct billions of dollars. So we're talking about quite a bit of money, right? Billions of dollars in transactions without gathering required information on customers or monitoring transactions meaning that like if the government comes and says hey you know who's doing business there how much are they doing when are they doing it who are they sending it to who are they getting it from these kind of things and um you know from the crypto perspective or from people who are into this stuff perspective they're like the reason why i get in this stuff is because i don't want anyone to know what i'm doing who i'm sending money to i want to keep everything anonymous etc from the government's perspective in terms of like you know money laundering um they want to you know keep tabs on all of these things so what will be interesting is if uh crypto uh, maintains popularity um even though maybe they have to like sort of change part of the culture or uh, what's the word to say part of like how they i will say management another way to say it i guess uh, in order to be compliant in, in multiple countries right so um you know what if you sign up for a crypto exchange but then there's something they're asking you for like all your details and then whenever you do a transaction would you want to give them all the details why why are you sending this money why or crypto i just said not money why are you sending this crypto you know what are they going to do with it i don't know that kind of stuff so i thought this part was really interesting um let's keep going over this uh, bnb a cryptocurrency tied to binance ecosystem slipped about five percent following the news so that's their kind of native uh, token thing um, the token hit a five-month high earlier in the day on the news that DOJ would soon uh, confirm its settlement with the exchange. So evidently it pumped and then it dumped. Uh, that's the BNB. Uh, moreover, it says, uh, talking about criminal charges here, the Justice Department accused the company as well as top executives. So uh, this are multiple people involved. They're not named in this particular one, but um, looks like, you know, more than one person's involved here, of taking steps to conceal uh, that it was dodging U.S. laws. So uh, not only were they uh, breaking the law, they were, uh, you know, trying to hinder the investigation. Maybe it just says taking steps to conceal. So we'll see what the, you know, the actual, uh, how can I say, um, you know, conviction slash charges end up being. But this kind of stuff, usually is, you can get them on, on double things. You're doing something wrong and you're trying to cover it up. Um, the filing states that from about August 2017 until October 2022, 
So I guess evidently, um, maybe after October 2022, everything's good, or did it? They got so much evidence, they don't need to keep counting. I guess um, Binance and Zhao were involved in a quote deliberate and calculated effort to profit from the U.S. market without implementing controls required by law. And uh, this is something that's interesting because um, if you've been following the story, uh, both these exchanges, like so, like a Binance and then like an FTX. They had like, for example, Binance.com and then they have a, a Binance.us and the same with FTX. There was like an FTX.com and FTX.us because uh, the U.S. Is, is strict on these things. And then um, the uh, various companies around or countries, I should say, around the world would also, uh, you know, have varying um, differences on how they want to enforce, you know, compliance uh, for these kind of exchanges. So you'd always hear news of like, oh, Binance can enter this country, but they can't enter this country, that kind of stuff. Or this country changes its mind. <laughs> uh, so here, you know, that we're, we're, we're talking about that um, uh, Binance was attracting you as customers um, and uh, allowing them to be on the exchange, uh, even though there were two different exchanges, right? And what I mean by it is like a, a U.S. person could make a, I think I think that was what they're claiming is make an account on say Binance.com or access it through a different way, probably through like a VPN or something like that. So, and and I'm sure there's other things that you could argue as well um, for these kind of things, which will you know that's more really get in the weeds. But the, the idea I wanted to sh share with you is that um, they're uh, claiming that uh, they're making money off the uh, <laughs> off the U.S. market uh, without following the law. <clears throat> And he also says here, um, Binance, quote, chose not to comply, right, not to comply with U.S. legal and regulatory requirements because it determined that uh, doing so would limit its ability to attract and maintain uh, U.S. Uh, users. And uh, moreover, and the same thing I was just talking about here, uh, saying here, um, Binance and its senior managers, again, um, multiple people are involved here, uh, from the company's inception tracked and monitored the user growth in the U.S., according to the complaint, uh, which included a company graphic from 2017 that showed that uh, showed more than 23% of Binance users were from the USA, um, a larger share than any other country. So <laughs> it's actually really interesting. Uh, so crypto, at least it's going to Binance. Um, I mean, without US money, it's hard to run a crypto if you're uh, you know, your users are 23% of them are coming from the USA, you know, bigger than any other country out there, which is actually really interesting because, uh, you know, we don't necessarily have the biggest population in the US. You could argue, you know, why don't uh, people in China or, or India, right, just for, for example, who are larger countries, uh, are, you know, why don't they have a bigger share on Binance? But Americans are into this stuff, evidently. Uh, more of it's saying here. Um, the government said Zhao as well, uh, or sorry, uh, the government said Zhao was well aware of the presence of U.S. customers on the international exchange, right? So they're not necessarily supposed to be U.S. customers on the international exchange, uh, writing in 2019 that if uh, Binance blocked U.S. customers from day one, it will not be as big as we are today. So they, they purposely wanted to get Americans. Um, I mean, money is money. You guys know this. Um, Zhao wrote that it was, quote, better to ask for forgiveness than uh, permission it's really interesting. Better to ask for forgiveness than permission. <laughs> Just do it. And then later, you know, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, and describe the situation as a, quote, gray zone. Uh, moreover, what else we have here? Um, Zhao faces a maximum sentence, maximum sentence of 10 years and fines up to uh, 500,000. Uh, plus any profits he made from the alleged scheme. Oh, okay. So this is where it could add up quite a bit, right? So... Give us 10 years plus 500K uh, plus any profits made from the alleged scheme. This could be quite a lot right here. Um, his lawyer said in court on Tuesday that his sentence will be delayed by six months. So I guess we won't know for a while yet the final result of this stuff. Um, Zhao's agreement includes a waiver of his right to appeal. Okay, so I guess they won't drag it out. Um, provided that his sentence doesn't exceed eight years. Uh, 18 months. Oh, interesting. So he could get a maximum sentence of 10 years, but the deal is don't appeal, and then um, your sentence won't exceed 18 months. Huh. That's really interesting. And it says, according to Judge Brian uh, uh, Suchita during a plea hearing. Uh, moreover, um, 
the, re the resolution against the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange and its top leader represents one of the largest penalties imposed within the cryptocurrency industry, which has been facing withering scrutiny from the Justice Department other and other government agencies and lawmakers. Um, Moreover, it says here, Binance, which exploded on the crypto scene in 2017 and almost immediately took on uh, and surpassed larger rivals, saw its market share surge to more than 60% worldwide. So... Uh, for those of you who haven't been following this that closely, Binance uh, was the biggest, um, and uh, it, it came even bigger after you know FTX failed in 2000, uh, 2022. Uh, since then, its combined market share for spot, crypto, and derivatives has declined to less than 44% this month, according to uh, CCD data. So I guess so they yeah they had a 60% market share. They're currently at 44% market share. So they're, they're still quite large. I mean I, th I still think they're the biggest by uh, a mile. Um, and uh, more of it says here, the Justice Department recently prosecuted FTX co-founder Sam Bankman fried in New York for allegedly orchestrating a multi-billion dollar misappropriation of customer funds that led to cryptocurrencies collapse. Bankman fried was convicted uh, of fraud following a trial. So um, I, I, I find this whole thing um, really, really interesting. And uh, I guess theoretically, this is the end of sort of the investigation and, and theoretically charges uh, if they made a deal and they know um, that the, you know, uh, the, the, I guess this is the end of said thing. And if you do again, I guess you know what the crime is going to be. We're watching you. Um, and, uh, you know, CZ uh, decided to step down. Um, the other thing I was, I was thinking about this is, you know, would crypto uh, go away if these exchanges didn't exist? Um, because it, it's it's an interesting question because you know the one of the appeals of crypto is like supposed to be decentralized and um you know again like are, are we tracking people not tracking people this kind of stuff um this stuff reminds me of and i i grew up with it and i'm curious what you guys you know think if it's kind of a similar thing if you hold if you remember the whole napster stuff uh torrenting and, and music sharing and you know uh, file sharing movie sharing whatever, whatever you want to call it um, and, and, you know, some new companies were, were popping up and then they disappear, but that particular like sharing stuff didn't necessarily go away. Um, you know, it, it's not nearly as easy or as popular if, if you remove these kind of exchanges, uh, I'm talking about crypto here, because in order to attract, um, you know, big money, uh, you got to figure out a way to make it easy for people to, you know, buy said crypto. So, um, you know, theoretically, uh, ETFs, you know, people will be able to buy that stuff through this and, and you'll just let like, you know, banks, um, sort of, uh, what's the word to say, I guess, bankify or commercialize crypto and then these exchanges will, will be much less important. Um, that's a, I'm saying that's a possibility in the future. Um, one of the things that is, is important to understand is that like these exchanges, they make a ton of money off, off transactions from, you know, you guys, uh, you know, buying and selling this stuff. So, you know, something like say, uh, was it was a big one US, uh, Coinbase, right, et cetera. Uh, even if they just make like a percentage of, you know, let's say 1% of all the, everything that everyone does, it adds up over time, as long as this stuff is, is, is popular. And it's interesting that like, you know, the company here is saying they're paying like 4.3 uh, billion. So that, that's pretty massive. And, uh, you know, if I'm an individual person being CZ and I'm getting a fine 50 million, <laughs> that's a lot of money also. But, um, you know, for him, that might not be that much. Uh, who knows how much he actually really has? I mean, like I said, who, who really knows? Uh, my understanding, he was hiding out in Dubai for quite some time. Um, evidently, I guess he's coming out of hiding now. And, and uh, the other thing, too, that there was always jabs uh, back and forth between him and, and you know, Bankman Freed. But uh, at the end of the day, it looks like they both ended up uh, paying the piper. So um, if there are any other exchanges out there that, uh, you know, are, are still facing stuff and, and yet to, uh, how can I say, um, yet to pay the piper, uh, we'll see. But uh, these are the two biggest, right? FTX and, and Binance. Uh, so love to hear your thoughts on this thing. I was just looking at the markets before recording this. Um, things are down and, and uh, crypto uh, was down also. Uh, so we'll see what goes on from here. So I always appreciate your thoughts on these things and, and, and sharing ideas on this stuff. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video.